on this. So, um, see what we have. AB is parallel to DC. Parallel to DC. And then AB is parallel to BC. Now, just like those slash marks, I have to um, write this out twice, okay? And then I want to prove that angle A is congruent to angle C. So is there any way I can prove that those two angles are congruent? Um, no, I don't think there's anything, right? I mean, how would you prove that those two angles are congruent? So then I can, okay, well then if, um, can I do it in two steps where I can prove that these two triangles are congruent? And then use CPCC to say that these parts are congruent. So let's see if I can prove the triangle is congruent. Well, if these two are parallel, okay, remember parallel lines? Here's my transversal. If you extend it out, it makes it easier to see. Then alternate interior angles, that angle with this angle of this triangle, are going to be congruent. And then since these two lines are parallel, same thing here. These two will be congruent to, or angle one is going to be congruent to angle four. If you um, want to see that again, it's like these are the two parallel lines. This is AB and this is DC. Here's the transversal. This is three and this is two. See if they're parallel, right? Then they're going to be congruent, right? Alternate interior angles. Same thing going this way. Um, my transversal. So here's angle four. Here's angle one. As long as they're parallel, then these two angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay. So then I have two angles. I have an angle, angle, but then I'm, I need one more, right? I need three. So remember earlier we, um, we looked at something similar, a diagram similar to this, where we have two triangles and they share a side, right? If they share a side, then automatically I can say that this side to this triangle is congruent to this side to this triangle, okay? That's like another one of those automatic things. So you have vertical angles that are automatic, automatically congruent, and you have um, a sh shared side that's automatically congruent. So then I have, now I have angle, I have three parts, I have an angle, Okay, I have sides and I have angles. So now I can say, in order to prove that this angle is congruent to this angle, I can first say that this whole triangle is congruent to this whole triangle, and then these parts of those congruent triangles are gonna be congruent. So, statements, reasons. One, AB is parallel to DC, and AD is parallel to BC. Given step two, um, angle one is congruent to angle four, um, and then my reason for angle one and con congruent to angle four and angle two being congruent to angle three is gonna be the same, right? My reason is gonna be the same, so I can just include it in the same step. I don't have to separate it. Angle two is congruent to angle three, okay? And then that step, both of those is gonna be um, if, now this one doesn't have, um, or you can say alternate interior angles theorem, or you can just write it out. If lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. You can just write it like that. Step three. Okay, so what do I have so far? I have my angle listed, angle stated, another angle stated. And now I have to state my side, right? So 
DB is congruent to BD. Now, notice how I didn't write BD and BD. Okay, I wrote DB and then I wrote BD. So, if I draw this out again, if I, I mean, if I separate out the two triangles, okay, this is D and this is B. This is D and this is B, okay? This angle right here is actually corresponding with this angle right here. Okay, see how if I flip it around, okay, um, this angle and this angle are congruent. This angle and this angle are congruent, okay? So, because this is angle 1 and then this is angle 4, right? And then we know that angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent. So then this and this are corresponding. So then I have to say B and D. So if it's D, B, then I have to say B, D. Does that make sense? So here's my side that I'm sharing. That's this side right here. Since angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 here, this angle and this angle are, are corresponding parts. So if I say DB, then I have to say BD because this is corresponding to this. And this one is corresponding to this one. That this one is congruent to this, right? So even though the letters are the same, DB and DB here, the angles, you have to look at the angles. This one is corresponding to this angle. So then if you mention D here first, you have to mention B first for the next one. So step three. This is reflexive property. Anytime something equals itself, okay, this, this side equals it's the same side, then it's reflexive property, okay? Then, okay, so did I say all that I need, needed to state? Yes. So now I can say, since I'm, I have all three parts, now I can say that the triangles are congruent. Triangle A, B, D is congruent to triangle. What's corresponding with A? C, what's corresponding to B? Remember the angle? D, B. What's my reason? Is my reason angle, angle, side? No, I have to look at the diagram. Angle, side, angle. I use angle, side, angle. Postulate. Okay, I used the angle and an angle and a side, but not in that order. It's in this order. But that's not it, right? The whole point wasn't to just prove that triangle is congruent. The whole point was to prove it congruent so that these parts will be congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C. And the reason, CPCTC. Now remember again, if I want to use this CPCTC rule, first triangles must be congruent. Okay, so here it has, this has to be stated somewhere before you use CPCTC. And once it is stated, then you can use it. Saying any part, any corresponding parts would be congruent. Okay? So that's it for this lesson. Um, We'll do a little more of this. Um, we're going to go over um, more triangle stuff next lesson. So we'll see you then. Thank you for watching Educator.com.